Hello everyone, I'm here at Predator Rich for a yoga series of four on pranayama or yoga breathing. My name is Claudia Sorensen and we'll start off by looking at over breathing. So over breathing is getting rid of too much carbon dioxide in our system. And we need the carbon dioxide because it opens up the airways and opens up the blood vessels so that we can get better circulation and better oxygen exchange. As well, carbon dioxide is what regulates how much oxygen is released into the tissues of our body. And so when we overbreathe, we don't have enough carbon dioxide in the system for these to happen. So how do we know if we're overbreathing? The common experience that we've all had at some point or another is if we breathe too quickly or too rapidly, then we can get lightheaded or dizzy, or we have to just drop our heads down for a second to regain that blackout feeling that may come. So that would be reduced blood flow to the brain. Reduced blood flow to the muscles would just be hitting the wall in exercise. So other signs that you may be over breathing would be chest breathing, if we're a chest breather and we don't actually breathe into our diaphragm as much or our abdomen, that could be over breathing. If we breathe through our mouth, that's another way that we know that we're over breathing. When we take some food into our mouth and we inhale as we're taking a bite, and we may not be very aware of that, but if you ever have a dessert, say with some icing sugar on the top of it and you take a bite, and you choke on the icing sugar, that's a really common way to know that we overbreathe because we inhale the food, so to speak. Um, drinking, too, would be another one. When we go to drink some water, and we take a breath in and then drink, and then exhale fully afterwards. So that would be another sign that you're an overbreather. And you can play with those in the next few days and notice, can you exhale and then take a bite of food? or exhale and then start to drink the water or drink that you're taking in and see, start to notice if you have these overbreathing habits. So we'll be working with some of the actual breathing into the belly and the ribs and the chest back as we work today. So we'll talk more about the role of carbon dioxide and oxygen a little bit later today. So first let's just see how we breathe. So find a standing position that's just comfortable for you. If you're already seated, stay seated, that's fine. And in this standing or seated position, just be whatever is natural for you. Don't try to hold Tadasana or any particular position, but where does the body want to feel relaxed? So that you're just nice and chill in your position. And without changing anything, often when we think about, notice your breath, we all of a sudden move it in a certain way. So just breathe, let your breath come and go, and notice what it's doing on its own, without regulating it, without directing it in any way. A little bit of a windy day here today with my mask blowing around. We gotta organize a few things. So coming back into the breath. Don't change the breath, just let the breath flow naturally. And notice your ratio of breathing. So the size and depth of the in-breath and the length and depth of the exhale. Other things you can notice is the ratio between the two. Sometimes we like to count in yoga. So breathe in on so many counts, breathe out on so many counts. Just let that go and just notice what it's doing for you. Sometimes we disrupt the breath if we start counting or putting too many goals on it. But right now you're just noticing how does your breath move of its own accord? What is your natural breath motion a natural breath ratio in this moment and in this moment? Because it will change according to what you think about, according to what you're moving in your body. And so we'll explore that here in a moment. Okay, so now that 
you have an idea of the pace of your breath, the depth of your breath, the movement of your breath, and the ratio of the inhale and the exhale, we'll start to move with it in asana practice and notice if it changes or how it's affected as we start to move the body. So we'll start off with some overhead reaches and back bends. So what is it like to have the breath move you? Typically when we do asana practice, we're all about moving first and then letting the breath flow. But instead, now that you've recognized what your breath is doing, stay with the breath and wait for the inhale to come to do an upward motion. And so your pace might be quite quick or it might be quite slow. Inhale on the upward motions, exhale on the downward motions. Just a really nice gentle movement. Take it into a back bend. So if you inhale up and back, exhale back to neutral. And when we move into a back bend, keep it gentle. So get rid of all the goals in your mind of pushing into it or compressing the back. You can drop your tailbone to just start with that. So as you inhale, drop your tailbone. Exhale, roll it forward. And then add to that, inhale, lift the chest, back to neutral. Maybe add the head into it. So we can do small motions, but let the motions follow your breathing. and dump our head back and compress into the cervical spine just the same as we compress into the lumbar spine. So instead, think about being tall, long, chin back, and then arch into a nice curve. From there, if you'd like to go further, feel free, but make sure the breath allows you to go there. So you don't go further than what the breath can move. Inhale. Try that a few more times. After having done the simple versions of just the pelvis, back bent, neutral, or the arms, we'll add in a more dynamic flow with a forward fold into back bent. So pause for a moment in your movement and reestablish what your natural movement is of your breath rhythm or the breath ratio. try to let your breath move you instead of your body moving and the breath trying to follow. So 
when doing that, you shouldn't have a necessarily faster breath rate from doing too much exercise or from focusing too much. Just let the breath flow and notice how it changes according to your movement without directing it or forcing it at all. So having a seat on your mat, we'll move into bridge pose. And this is gonna be working with feeling the breath where moving down into the abdomen. So where does the breath move in your body more so? Great with you today. <laughs> so have it lay down onto position with your feet standing, laying on your back. And if your shoulders are forward, just take a moment to roll them underneath you. And feeling the lower back away from the floor, tip your pelvis so that you flatten it to the floor. Or if by having your knees bent and your feet flat, the natural position should be to have your back just drop down. So just notice if that happens for you. We're going to be allowing the breath to move into the diaphragm or into the belly and lower back. So we don't want this area to be held or tight. So just notice if that lower back feels relaxed. You place your hands on top of your abdomen and just notice a rise and fall happen there as you breathe. Again, don't force it. It's not a competition here to get the most breath into there because competition is foreign to yoga. But just feel what movement you have there, if any. Or does all the breath come up into the chest? So this is breathing from the diaphragm, which is a dome shape right around our ribs. And so as the muscle contracts, it should move downward. And as it relaxes, it rises up into our rib cage. So if you can visualize that, if you're a visual person, inhale down with the muscle contracting, exhale, and it rises up to relax upwards into the dome shape into our ribs. Inhale, exhale. So when we're laying on our that motion happening. And not only into the belly, but also the lower back. So you might feel some downward pressure into the floor, or if you place your hand there, feel some pressure into your hand. We'll add a little bit of pelvic tilt next to enhance that motion. So as you inhale, drop your lower back towards the floor just by pushing into your feet. And then exhale and come back to neutral wherever that is for you. So remember that we're following the rhythm of the breath so that it's not forcing it, we're not making movements happen that don't just flow with the rhythm of your breath. We'll take that a step further. So not only just pushing our backs flat, but roll up. So we have an upward motion on an inhale and a downward motion on the exhale. Again, the point of this is to just follow the rhythm of your breath. And if you only want to breathe in a little bit, then only rise up a little visual people can have the image of the diaphragm moving down. Exhale. Inhale. You can stick with that motion if you want to take it even further. 
to inhale further up through the sides of the ribs and the upper back. And you can take your arms overhead. And see if that inhale ratio compared to exhale can be followed naturally and smoothly without having the movements drive the breath. we'll play with is changing the focus of gravity so in cat and cow with your wrists right underneath your shoulders and knees right underneath your hips so that we're not reaching out and having to brace our spines but just balanced over the two shoulder and hip girdles pelvic girdles and here if we tend to just hang our heads from the seventh cervical bring your head push straight back to have your head in line with your spine or slightly look forward a bit. If we tend to just drop it or look ahead, then again, we're hanging from our shoulders and compressing our neck. So just bring it up and look forward a bit. And then think about not sagging into the shoulders, but having a bit of pressure into the hands. So we have this happy medium between we're not pressing up and we're not hanging or dip down. So the shoulder blades are on our backs, but we're stable and it supports the neck a bit more. Okay, from there, this motion that we were doing in the other position, we'll repeat that, but follow the rhythm of the breath. So first, find your natural ratio of breath for how much you inhale and how much you exhale. And let the belly fall here as you inhale. And as you exhale, feel the diaphragm rise up and a little bit of an abdomen contraction. If you're looking more for the transverse abs that wrap around, to contract that or like the end of the exhale, that is helping push some of the breath out. So be careful with this again that you're not, it's not an exercise to push the breath out, but just noticing the actions. So letting the breath fall into the abdomen and then exhale, having to fight the gravity to push the breath out of the body a little bit. Next, notice the breath coming around into the lower back here, just as we did when it was pushing against the floor. That there's some movement across into your lower back and to the sacrum. The diaphragm coming across the back of the ribs is also pushing down into your lumbar spine and the back muscles, lower back muscles. Just notice that movement happening inside of your body. If you don't feel it, that's totally fine. We're going to accentuate it next. So as we move between a cat and a cow position, I'd like you to initiate the movement with the pelvis. So don't worry about so much about the shoulders moving. Keep them fairly neutral, they'll follow along. But initiate the pelvic tilt. And then time it with your breathing. So if you want to inhale into the belly, accentuate that drop. Exhale, feel it drop up a little bit. following the rhythm of your breath rather than the movement dictating your breath. A little more patience, a little more awareness of the body. And often we tend to really round through the upper back. So you can feel some of the breath move there too, but initiate it from this lower back to get the abdomen breathing. So 
So in this case, you can reverse the movement. So as you inhale, inhale into the lower back, exhale, let it draw in and up. Inhale, Our last asana practice before we move into the breathing practice will be moving from child's pose into upward dog. First off, drop down in child's pose with the arms out in front so we're ready for the transition. If you don't feel comfortable sitting right back on your heels, you can come a little bit further forward, even all the way up into half half dog. So anywhere along that spectrum, find the place that's comfortable for you. And we will just rest there for a little bit. And again, come back to the natural flow of the breath, not changing anything, not disrupting it, not disturbing it. But just as you relax in that position, feeling your rhythm of breath, how quick is it? How long is it? exhale longer is the inhale longer and let it do whatever it wants to naturally do while you're in that position into the pranayama practice and back into the effects of our breathing on our health. So lay in a comfortable position. I'm using the bolster to pin down my mat in the wind here. So if you'd like to put the bolster underneath your knees to be more comfortable, if you have a pillow 
pillow handy works. You can stand your feet up with your knees dropping in together. Tuck your shoulder blades so they're flat. So any comfortable position for you. And the idea of Shavasana is to completely relax your body. So have your eyes closed for less distractions. And as you relax your entire body back into your mat or back into the floor, follow the rhythm of your breathing once again. If your mind is busy, bring your mind back to the breath. your body wants to move because you're getting uncomfortable, then move to the rhythm or the flow of your breath. So it's slow, conscious motion. Every exhale, you feel your body sink down into the floor. And every inhale is spontaneous, just allowing the breath to fill up wherever it wants to go without directing the breath. in your body, the calm, calm breath. The natural rhythm of it. Don't try to do anything with it. Just really noticing where you're at and your ratio of inhale to exhale. Now not moving the body in any way with asana, but purely just relaxing, giving yourself into gravity. your shavasana of pure relaxation and just coming back to your natural breath rhythm then come on up to a seated position for a pranayama practice and pranayama is conscious breathing so you may want to sit in a chair if that's more comfortable for you you may want to sit on a bolster or a block of some sort being a little bit elevated is helpful if you want to sit in full lotus feel free Easy sitting pose or sukhasana is just your legs out in front of you somewhere. They don't need to be crossed or tucked in in any way. So just find a comfortable position. Ankles can be stacked. So chair, bolster, block, or right on the floor. Really important is to have the pelvis neutral. If we are dropped back as we're sitting, then there's no way we can keep our spine straight without effort and we'll just collapse back into it. So if you can roll forward onto your sit bones, whether you're on a chair or on the floor or any sort of support on the floor, have your pelvis in a neutral position so that there's a bit of a lumbar curve. And this will enable you to have your upright spine for the best type of breathing. So just sit into your position and make sure that you're comfortable that you can be here for a few minutes. No rushing of anything. With the breath, it's really easy to override it and to force it into something. So take your time and notice your breath ratio here. So through this whole practice, we've been following the natural impulses of the body, how the breath wants to move on its own and then played with following the asana practice according to our breath. So the breath guided how quickly and how far we went into different movements. Breathing into the abdomen. We experimented with a little bit. And so now we're going to do the pranayama practice of slowing the breath down. We will be directing the breath now, but only to the pace that is sustainable for you. So if at any time through this you 
feel that you need to gasp or make up the breath or yawn or sigh, those again come back into our over breathing. So we want to slow the pace of our breath down, but without needing to force it in any way, which all that does is creates restriction or tension in the body, which is what we're trying to get rid of. So in your seated position, you've now just hopefully noticed again, how does the breath want to just move on its own? What's the body's impulse for breath? And then we'll gently lengthen the exhale a little bit. Let the inhale come in and do whatever it wants. Move wherever it wants. Don't worry about that. We'll work with those in our future sessions. But the exhale, just focus on a slower exhale. And then when you feel the need for breath, let the breath come in spontaneously. The other way you can do instead of slowing the breath down is to let more breath out of the body. So the exhale becomes longer because we're not holding some residual air into our lungs or our abdomen. So exhale, slowly exhale, slowly exhale, but keep it going. When you think that you've exhaled, contract through your transverse abs, the ones that wrap around, cinching in, which squeezes a little bit more breath out, and then relax. Let the inhale come in spontaneously, filling up wherever it wants to go. So two ways to focus on your exhale. One is to slow the exhale down and lengthen it, or to lengthen it by exhaling further, getting more air out of the body. So play with those two. should still have a nice rhythm to it. So we've changed the ratio where the exhale is longer than the inhale, but not so much that then you have to gasp or take a really quick breath in. a little bit longer at a time, not too quickly, not overriding anything, but just encouraging the exhales to be a little bit longer. You can once again visualize this diaphragm, this dome shape, relaxed, it rises up into the ribcage, and when you inhale it contracts flattens down, which is what sucks the breath into your lungs. And that's what we call diaphragmatic breathing or belly breathing, where we then feel a little bit of pressure down into the abdomen. Really exhale. Let the diaphragm completely relax, push the breath out. And let the diaphragm contract on its own to draw the breath into your that we talked about at the beginning is the main regulation factor of our breathing rate. So we need to have the carbon dioxide levels high enough so that the oxygen can be released into our tissues. So at any given time, we breathe in, the oxygen gets taken into the hemoglobin and transmitted through the body. Though those levels are like 98, 95% saturated. We have oxygen flowing through us all the time. 
But in order for the oxygen to be released into the tissues, for that blood to let it go and be absorbed into the tissues, is dependent on how much carbon dioxide we have in our system. So by having the carbon dioxide opening up our airways, opening up our bloodstream, so the flow is better, it also allows the oxygen to be released. So if we are over breathing, we reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in our system because the ability, the, what do you call it, the impulse, the impulse to breathe comes from too high levels of carbon dioxide rather than lack of oxygen. And so if we slow the breath down to where it should be or a regulated pace, then it maintains our di carbon dioxide levels in our body. If we overbreathe, with some of the signs we talked about with inhaling our food or mouth breathing, or if we yawn or sigh regularly, those are also signs that we overbreathe. We're getting rid of too much carbon dioxide in the body. So these can happen for any number of reasons, but we want to calm the system enough that we can slow the breath down. So just as you're sitting here practicing, slowing your exhale down, don't force it, don't count it, it becomes mechanical if it's too easy. So try to slow the breath down enough, but not to the point where you need to gasp or have a muscular, muscular reaction to quicken the breath. You need to encourage it over time. And then as you practice this, when you're doing your asana practice or when you're out for a run doing any exercise at all, the breathing will naturally increase as we need to get rid of more carbon dioxide in the body. But uh, let that happen on its own accord. Don't think that we need to breathe quickly in order for that to happen. It will regulate on its own. Focus more on exhaling longer and breathing slower. The impulse to breathe when you need to will come. So instead, encourage the slow of the slowness of the breath, especially the exhale. In the next few days, practice slowing your breath down, whether you're just at rest, when it's most common that we overbreathe. Practice slowing it down when you're just going out for a walk. Maybe if you're doing anything, exercising and running or cycling, something that's a little bit more cardiovascular, endurance style, you can also practice slowing it down. But especially at, breath, at rest, practice sitting watching a movie or cooking your dinner, just slowing the exhale down a little bit and keeping the carbon dioxide levels up so we open the airways, we open the blood vessels, we release more oxygen into the system and creating more health in the body. We'll see you for the next pranayama session where we'll be covering more of our cardiovascular health. Thank you.